Hello everybody, this is uh, Mr. Hussain Masabi. Alright, so uh, in this video, we'll be looking at what is called hooks. Law. Alright, I believe most of us have come across this law. You have learned it in different levels of your endeavors. But uh, we'll try and see how best we can uh, peruse and see how this law is applied in most cases of physics all right let's begin so before i explain what Hooke's law is what do you think it is all right i know you're wondering and thinking in your mind say ah this is a law that deals with a lot of things but to be precise Hooke's law deals with springs and since we are looking at deformation of solids in terms of Hooke's law we will highly discuss more on springs all right, let's get to it. Now, Hooke's law states that, provided that the proportionality limit is not exceeded, the extension of a material is directly proportional to the what? Force applied. This means that the force that is applied is directly proportional to the what? Extension of that particular what? Material. Provided that the proportionality limit is not what? Exceeded. With this in mind, we can say F is directly proportional to what? X. And since these, this is a variation, to be precise, then force is simply equi equal to KX. Alright, so in our equation, F is simply just a force. K is what we call the spring constant. And X is simply our extension. Now be mindful of this, that force is measured in Newtons. The spring constant is measured in Newtons per meter. And the extension is simply just measured in what? Meters. Now, if you can recall what we learned, there was a discussion uh, where we said that extension is equal to what? Length final minus what? Length initial. Be mindful. Of this. So, Hooke's law states that, provided that the proportionality limit is not exceeded, the extension of the material is directly proportional to the what? Force applied. So, this implies that Hooke's law in that relates force and extension. So, what we'll do is this. We're going to relate Hooke's law in terms of what? Springs, since we're looking at deformation of what? Solids. Now, how can we explain Hooke's law in terms of springs? We can say this. That Hooke's law, to the fact that it deals with springs, states that, provided that the proportionality limit is not exceeded, which is the condition that we're maintaining, the extension of a spring is directly proportional to the what? Force applied in tension or what? Compression intention or compression be mindful of this provided that the proportionality limit is not exceeded the extension of the spring is directly proportional to the water force applied in tension or compression now whenever you're talking about the term tension tension is just the type of force experienced by a rope of string being what pulled so if you pull any rope or string that string experiences what we call tension, and tension is a type of force. Tension is positive. Then if you look at the term compression, compression is like changing the size, a decrease in the length. If you look at tension, tension involves you increasing the length, but compression involves you decreasing that particular length. So if you look at compression, compression is simply the force experienced by a rope, or let me say a, a, a string, or in this in this case a spring, upon it being uh, pushed internally, not necessarily internally. Let's say upon it being pushed to the point at which its length is reduced. That is what we call compression. And compression in most cases is what is negative. Now, with this in our mind, with 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 the Hooke's law in our mind, we can see our best. Uh, problems are brought under the deformation of water solids so at this point we know our hook's law states we know 
what it involves. We know how you can define it or state it in terms of springs. And now I have to look at the conditions that we might come across. Let's look at the first condition. So the first condition involves what we call vertical springs. When you say vertical spring, we're talking about a spring that has been put in a form of, uh, let me not say a form, let me say a spring that has been uh, hang vertically. It's a simple term, so a simple way you can express, express it. So vertical springs are just springs that are uh, put in a vertical axis. So if you look at this condition one, it shows uh, a fixed support, as you can see, and uh, the spring, this is a spring. This spring is not stretched to any length. It only has the original water length. So you can say that this spring is in its natural water length. Or we can say uh, it's an extended. It has an extended what? Length. Because extension is the change in water, uh, the length. So the length can either change by increasing in form of tension or decreasing in form of what? Compression. Be mindful of that. So in this condition, you're just having the water, the spring uh, that has been attached vertically. So this implies that there is no what? extension so extension is equal to what zero which means the distance is zero so i'll explain more in future videos on what it means when the distance is zero but for now be mindful of this therefore the distance is zero if the length is unextended let's move on to the second one condition in this condition, we're having a fixed support, as usual, and then we're having uh, a mass being attached to the water, to the uh, spring. Now, when a mass is attached to a spring, it causes an extension, a change in length. Because this mass, the mass M, provides a force due to gravity. And that force is what we call it, the weight. And weight, as we all know, is equivalent to what? Mg. So, this means that the Mg is simply the force pulling the spring. So, you can say force is equal to what? The weight. And that weight is equal to what? Mg. And that Mg is the force stretching the spring. This implies that F pulls the spring. But this force is putting the spring in what is known as tension. And tension, like, like we discussed earlier, said is what? Positive. So this tension is going to cause a displacement. A displacement of what? X, which is going to be what? Positive. Be mindful of this. So, it means that the same extension will be as a result of the change in what? Length. So, this displacement is going to be equivalent to length final minus length what? Initial. And this is what is known as the change in what? Length, which is the extension. So, just a change in extension or just extension. In simple terms but when we say change in extension i don't really like using it because changing extension simply means your, your different extensions that are being experienced by what a material so let's just maintain x to be length final minus what length initial so be mindful of this so extension is length final minus length initial which is uh what x corresponds to so let's try and move move and look at a different what condition so a different condition is condition three, <clears throat> in which we are now having a condition where we now have the change in what uh, length, which is the extension. So I'll just say, okay, change in x is just the x that we're calculating earlier on. So provided that the elastic limit is not really exceeded by this particular material, what will happen? It means that the force will be equal to k change in what x be mindful of this now we had our we had our initial length 
and the final length that we had. The, the change in the particular length of this spring gave us what we're calling as x. And if you look at this condition, we're having a point here, which I can call point what? H. And I'll explain what point H uh, tells us about this uh, particular uh, condition. So be mindful of this, that provided the elastic limit is not exceeded, force is equal to K change in what? Extension, change in length, sorry. Yeah, force is equal to K change in length. So let's be mindful of that. Other books would just say force is equal to what? Kx, of which you already know that x is just a change in what? Length. So let's put this to mind. So now, what does point H tell us? Now, you need to know this. At point H, the body is at rest. Or let's just say at equilibrium. Provided that no additional force is applied to it. This tells us that once you let go, or let's say force F is removed, the spring will snap back or go to its original what? Length, which is length what? Initial. And this is as a result of the third law of what? Motion. To every action, there is a reaction, which is an equal but opposite what? Direction. Now, the force applied, which is FP, here, say FP, um, cause the spring to be in what? Tension, like we discussed, which is positive. But the force that pulls the spring back to its original length, when the applied load of force is removed, is going to be in what? Compression. Now, this force is called the restoring what? Force, and it is negative. It is negative. Because this condition, or let me say the action in which the spring is being pulled, and upon being let go, is going back to its original length, just talks about the third law of motion. And third law of motion, remember, to every reaction, there's an equal but opposite what? Reaction. So, this implies that the applied force, the magnitude of the applied force, is equal to the magnitude of the what? Restoring force, FR. But, different in what? Directions. Let's be mindful of this. So, this means that the force applied is equal to Kx. And this is in what? Tension. But the restoring force, Fr, is equal to negative K what? X. And this is in what? Compression. Where X is the change in length and K is a spring what? Constant. Let's be mindful of this. Now, I want us to see how we can visualize these vertical springs with what is known as horizontal atom springs. So, in a condition that is similar with vertical springs, say you have an horizontal atom spring, say it's called this part support, and you spring like that. So, this is the length initial. So, at the initial length, the distance is equal to atom zero. But suppose you have a different condition as this. Suppose a mass, let's now put a mass here. Let's say we have a mass there. Mass. So suppose this mass is pulled with a force. It's pulled with a force F. Say it's pulled with a force F. Now, this force F that pulls on this mass causes a change in what? Length. There will be a change in length, which is going to be equal to what? Our extension. So you will have your initial length from there to there, and your final length from this point to that point. And then you have your uh, x, which is a distance from the original to where you are, which is this point here. So in most cases, be mindful of this. So when you pull this uh, box, let's call this the box. We said this is uh, the box. When you pull the box to a distance of x, what happens is that the force that you applied in pulling this box to a distance of x is equal to what? kx. You see? 
because this force is in what we call tension so be mindful of this so what happens that when you let go of the box with that amount of force you applied what will happen is that the box will snap back and go back to its original length and that force not the one that was applied but the restoring force will be equivalent to negative what kx and this force will simply be in what compression be mindful of it it's going to be in what compression so uh, with this in mind we have discussed what happens when you have vertical springs and horizontal springs so we are now going to look at some examples that relate to our discussion so we're going to look at problem number what? one problem number one says problem number one says the spring constant is 45 newtons per watt per meter what force is required to stretch a spring by seven watt centimeters so now what is going to happen here is this you're having a spring constant of 45 newtons per meter and you're now looking for the force that is required to stretch a spring by seven centimeters remember provided that the proportionality limit is not exceeded or the elastic limit is not exceeded we know that the force is directly proportional to the what extension which means that uh, force is equal to what k x now let us collect data in our data what we're interested in is what k is k has been said to be what 45 newtons per watt meters but now what is our extension now because there's this force that, is, that we're looking for that requires a stretch uh by seven centimeters so we're looking at seven centimeters to be our heart distance that was covered or our extension to be precise so now i can't really get the extension in centimeters because our extension should always put in what in meters unless not specified so we're going to divide this by what 100 which will give us 0 0.07 meters with this information that we have we can just substitute in our formula where it says f is equal to k which is 45 times 0 0.07 and the force uh, which is required to stretch a spring by 7 centimeters, if you compute this on a calculator, is 3.15 Watt Newtons. As simple as it is. Alright, let's look at a different example, which is problem number 2. Alright, you can always uh, pause and try to attempt uh, this question on your own. But anyway, let's do it together. So, let's look for the solution. It says, a 100 Newton force pulls a spring by Watt. 2 meters. Calculate the value of K. K is what we call the spring constant. Remember, force is equal to what? Kx. Now, our interest is K and not X. So, all we have to do is to make K the subject of the formula, of which you divide by X, then this by X, X cancels with X, and the spring constant to be equal to force over what? Extension. Now, let's collect data. We have the force of 100 newtons. We have the extension of 2 watt meters. This implies that spring constant K is equal to 100 divided by watt 2, which gives you 50 watt newtons per watt meters. Like that. Now, what does this tell us about this material? This tells us to say that um, in one meter, in one meter, let me say in one meter, a force of 50 newtons is needed to stretch the water spring so I can also say that in order for us to stretch this, the spring uh, to a distance of one meter we need a force of water 50 newtons to be applied isn't it this is very simple and straightforward Upon us getting to understand this clearly, we will see how best we can even solve future problems that might be brought. Alright, let's look at the last example, which is example number one, two, three. So this is a very interesting example. It says a spring of an extended length of 10.5 centimeters is suspended vertically from what? A fixed point. As you can see, this is a fixed point as shown below. Now a mass of weight 2.7 newtons is hung from the spring as shown below causing the length of the spring to now be 15.2 watt centimeters as you say it like that calculate the spring constant all right so we know that uh, force is equal to what 
kx, where x is the change in length. So we are interested in what spring constant. So we have to make k the solid formula of which, if we do it mathematically, we have k is equal to f of our term, x. Now, if we collect data and ask ourselves, okay, what is the force? The force here is 2.7 newtons. But now, what is the extension? Remember that we said x is simply just a change in length, which means length final minus what? Length initial. But now, what is our final length? Our final length is 15.2 centimeters. So we need to get our final length, but not really in centimeters, no. We'll convert this into what? Uh, meters. So we'll just say 15.2 divided by 100, then minus the initial length, which is 10.5, 10.5 divided by what? 100. So if you compute this properly, you will end up having uh, 0 0.152 minus 0 0.105, which means that the extension is now equivalent to 0 0.047 meters. This is our extension. Now, we know that um, the spring constant, K, is equal to force of our two extension. And the force is 2.7 divided by the extension, which is 0 0.047. Therefore, the spring constant K is now going to be equivalent to, let me not say therefore, because I know if we compute this on the calculator, it's going to be a big number. So if we compute this, we'll be having 57.4468 newtons per watt meters. And this implies that the spring constant K is equal to 57.45 newtons per watt meters. So this is basically how you are supposed to go about solving what, uh, this question. So be mindful that when it comes to Hooke's law, all you have to know is to, uh, all you have to understand is simply first what it states, what does Hooke's law state. The moment you understand this, try and relate this to springs. If you relate this to springs, you are also safe. Then see to it that you solve as many problems as what possible. So this is literally everything you need to know basically on a basic scale of Hooke's law. We'll look at more and more ways in which you can understand the formation of solids under Hooke's law and different conditions that may be attached to this. All right, so my name is simply... Mr. Hussein uh, Mwasapi. And uh, remember to like and subscribe to my channel. All right, remember as well that you need to strategize before you become a statistic. And uh, let's always try to push for that A+.